The Resident Evil series has seen its fair share of remakes recently. Resident Evil 2 Remake was well received and set the standard by which remakes are judged now. Resident Evil 3 Remake was released one year later, and yet is heavily criticized. It really deserves more love than it gets. Let's jump in. It is the opinion of some that RE3 Remake should have been an expansion. The original game, Nemesis, had an interesting development cycle. The game itself was never meant to be a numbered entry. It began as filler before the true third entry of the series, which ended up being Devil May Cry. Both Nemesis and Code Veronica were developed simultaneously by separate teams. While either could have technically been Resident Evil 3, they were both given titles suggesting they were not a true numbered sequel. There are opinion pieces on why Code Veronica should have been the true Resident Evil 3. It expands the story, sets up future events, and is just a far longer, more in-depth game. You have Claire searching for Chris, he ends up captured, escapes, discovers an umbrella base where a new virus is being developed, flies to Antarctica, Chris also appears in the story. This is also the game that Chris and Wesker became. This is also the game where Chris and Wesker became mortal enemies. There was a huge close combat fight between them in the closing scenes of the game. It left story elements open for future games. The game that became Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was originally not even supposed to star Jill Valentine. It was supposed to star the UBCS squad featuring Carlos, Nikolai, Mikhail, and other members. This was a game to be focused more on action. You would fight many enemies in different scenarios to escape the city. It was short, best paced, it was supposed to be a one-off story. Late in the development cycle, the decision was made to include Jill Valentine, and then, even later, to add three to the title. A few more sections of the game were added to make it a little bit longer. RE3 Nemesis had one-off villains. Nemesis did not appear in another game, with the exception of Operation Raccoon City but that is not considered canon. Nikolai did appear in another game. However, it was still set during the events of Raccoon City. So back to RE3 Remake. Expecting more than an expansion when the source material you're working from was originally meant to be an expansion seems foolish. What the remake did far better than the original was to refine the story and create a narrative that was more exciting and made more sense. We also need to bear in mind, at most, RE3 Remake had a three year development process. Sounds like a long time, however, most quality game take longer, usually four to five years, sometimes longer than that. Of course, you have your Call of Duties, Assassin's Creeds, and other cookie cutter games that are released year after year. Wanting to capitalize on the success of RE2 Remake, Capcom pushed to have them released within one year of each other. With that being said, there may have been some small cuts to content and some shortcuts taken. Most of the shortcuts were sharing resources, sharing assets, which if you already have it built, why would you build it again? Doesn't make sense. How many Resident Evil titles have used crank, lockpick, a lighter, medallions, coins? Many fans were Upset at the exclusion of the clock tower, truthfully, it's a short area to begin with. The exclusion of the giant worm boss really did not take anything away from the game. It felt very tacked on in the original Nemesis. 
you fight it twice and it just kind of shows up. There's no purpose aside from adding length to the game. Let's look at completion time with it as well. If you want to take speedrun into account, Nemesis is a faster run than RE3 Remake. Both games on the low end take just over 40 minutes to complete. A casual player could expect to spend the same amount of time to finish each game or pretty close. The last heavily criticized point, the original price. This is one point that I can't agree on. At launch, Project Resistance was tacked on to justify the $60 price tag. There was no option to buy RE3 Remake without buying Project Resistance. A $40 version of RE3 Remake by itself would have been fine for most people. It's hard to justify a game that, yes, is relatively short to be $60, but less than a year later, it was already down to as low as $17 at time. So at this point, the price is far better than it was. So now that we've defended some of the aspects of the game that are viewed as negative, let's talk about what it does well. The characters of Jill and Carlos are far better than the original. In fact, I would love to see Carlos in another game in the future. Raccoon City looks incredible. Everywhere you go, there's a lot to see. Lots of detail. The Nemesis model is also very well done. The narrative is much more fine-tuned than the original. While it is essentially the same story, it's also great to see what exactly happens to Marvin to seal his fate in the second game. The arsenal of weapons at your disposal is fun, handles well, and the inclusion of the dodge mechanic keeps this title as a more action-based Resident Evil. Overall, the game is an incredible playthrough. At the end of the day, games are supposed to be fun, and this game does a great job of that. This is Pyrocitor Watts of Hammer Bros Gaming. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Do you agree? Or do you disagree? Check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Hammer Bros Gaming. It's four of us. We stream regularly. That about wraps it up. So we'll see you next time. Enjoy your week, wonderful people.